In this tutorial, we are going to talk about Meshes.jl package. Meshes package provides efficient implementations of concepts from computational geometry. To add Meshes in Julia programming language, go inside the repo, hit the right square brackets to go into the package mode and type add Meshes. In this tutorial, I am also using the Cairo Mackie package for visualization. If you don't know how to work with Cairo Mackie for visualization, I've got a video for it, just check it out. Now I use the using keyword to import the meshes package and also I import the Cairo Maggie package as MKE. As a starting point, meshes package has some fundamental data structures. One of them is points and the other is vectors. I explain them by example. For instance, in defining the points, I can pass different data types, double precision, single precision, and also note that integer is converted to float64 by design. What do I mean by that? Integer coordinates are converted to float64 to fulfill the requirements of most geometry processing algorithms, which would be undefined in a discrete scale. And also, a point is defined by its coordinates in a coordinate reference system from coreRefSystems.jl package. By default, the Cartesian coordinates with no data item are used. I define two points A and B and also points can be subtracted to actually produce a vector. Also points by definition cannot be added together, but the vectors from the origin to the points can. In this case, we can use the to function. What does the to function actually do? We pass a point to the to function and it will return a vector from the origin to the point. So we can actually add two vectors together and produce another vector as a result of this summation. In addition, we can add a point to a vector and get a new point. And this totally makes sense with its geometric interpretation. For example, you've got a point and you add a vector and you get a location of another point. Every point and vector has well-defined coordinates. For the purpose of getting the coordinates of every vector and point, you can use the coords function, which returns the coordinates of the point or returns the coordinates of the vector. You can pass both the vector type and point type to it. Now I want to talk about the primitives, but before I do that, guys, please subscribe to the channel and like this video to not lose future content on Julia programming tutorials. This helps me continue to actually create Julia programming tutorials for you. Primitive geometries such as box, ball, sphere, cylinder are those geometries that can be efficiently represented in a computer without discretization. These geometries can be constructed using clean syntax. For instance, over here I pass to the box function an axis aligned mean and max corners and use the viz function for visualizing the box by passing the variable b to it. The viz function has some available options like color alpha channel and color map and color range and lots of other options that you can use for your visualization purposes. This comprehensive documentation can help you develop your code in no time. For instance, you can visualize boundaries with show segments. What do I mean by that? I'll talk about that later. And also you can do element coloring and lots of other things. You can also define an sphere by passing the center coordinates and the radius of the sphere and use the visualization function viz. You can also query the parameters of these primitive geometries by using the extrema function and passing the, for example, the box to it and you'll get the extreme points, I mean the minimum and maximum points. You can use the centroid function to get the centroid and radius function to get the radius of, for example, this sphere. We can also get the measure, area, volume and other geometric properties. You can also sample random points on primitives using different methods. For example, using a regular sampler, we can sample 10 points over the sphere. For this purpose, we pass the sphere and the regular sampling function's output to the sample function. We can collect the generator and visualize it with the viz function. Now I want to talk about the polytopes. Polytopes are geometries with flat sides. They generalize polygons and polyhedra. In the meshes package we've got segments, angon, for example triangle and quadrangle, tetrahedron, pyramid and hexahedron. For example over here to define a triangle I pass the coordinates of the three vertices of the triangle to the triangle function. Some of the geometries defined have additional functionality like measure or area. Over here I pass the triangle to the measure function and calculate its measure or area. We can check whether the output of the area is equal to the output of the measure function by using the equal equal operator. And if you want to know whether a point is inside a triangle or not, we can use the set belongs to operator. 
You can define line segments and check their intersection by using the set intersection operator. Polytopes are widely used in GIS software under names such as line, string, and polygon. And Mesh's package provides robust implementations of these concepts, which are formally known as polygonal chain and poly area. We can compute the orientation of a chain as clockwise or counterclockwise, can open and close the chain, create bridges between the various inner rings with the outer ring, and other useful functionality. For instance, I've defined a poly area over here and use the viz function to visualize it. And I can use the orientation function to pass the poly area to it and get the orientation from it. For example, if the output is CCW, it means counterclockwise. Basically, orientation returns the orientation of the geometry as either counterclockwise CCW or clockwise CW. We can also get the outer ring of the geometry, in this case poly area, and reverse it. You can also get the vertices of the ring by using the vertices function and pass the ring to it. This means that we can index the vertices with indices that go beyond the range 1 till n vertices of the ring. This is very useful for actually writing several algorithms since you can access the things in the inner structure. You can also compute angles of any given chain no matter if it is open or closed by using the angles and passing the ring to it. And the sign of these angles is a function of the orientation. In the case of rings or closed chains, we can compute inner angles by using the inner angles and passing the ring to it. And you can use the isSimple function to specify whether polygon is simple or not. Before I talk about the meshes, I want to say that please support this channel by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Meshes package provides efficient, lazy mesh representations, for instance, Cartesian grid and simple mesh, which are specific types of the domain type. A domain is an indexable collection of geometries, for example, mesh. For instance, I define a grid by passing to the Cartesian grid the spatial discretizations I want in each axis and visualize the grid by using the viz function which has several options. Here I set the show segments to true. If I use the allocated macro which shows me the memory allocated to this actually function call, it shows the zero. It means that no memory is allocated for this function call. But still you can loop over the elements which are quadrangles in two dimensions by using the collect and passing the grid to it. We can construct a general unstructured mesh with a global vector of points and a collection of connectivity that is stored the indices to the global vector of points. I define a set of points and use the connect function to connect them and make a triangle out of it or a quadrangle out of it and or a simple mesh out of it by using the simple mesh function and passing the triangles and quadrangles and the points to the simple mesh function. And of course you can visualize the mesh by using the viz function and setting the show segments to true. You can also loop over the elements of the mesh function by using the collect function. For example over here the actual geometries of the elements are materialized in a lazy fashion like with the Cartesian grid. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Please support the channel because I can continue to make Julia programming videos with your support only. Thanks for watching this video. And as always, see you all later.